first impressions are important. It only takes 15 seconds to form a first impression of somebody. By the time I've gotten up here to speak, you've noticed a few things about me already. You've noticed the fact that I'm white, that I'm female, that I'm not very tall, although I'm wearing heels today. As I've continued to speak, you might have concluded that I'm well-educated by the way that I present myself. And in those few seconds, you've also made some decisions about me. You've decided that perhaps I'm somebody you'd like to get to know better. You might have decided that I'm not very important to your day, and you're just going to pass me by. Or perhaps, for whatever reason, you might have decided that you don't like me at all. Those are the things that you see about me. What you don't see about me is the fact that I live with an invisible disability. I have a rare medical condition called phenylketonuria. It is a metabolic genetic disorder, and it prevents my body from being unable to metabolize protein. What this means is that I'm limited to seven grams of protein a day, and anything in excess of that accumulates in my bloodstream and becomes toxic to my brain. Over time, it causes cumulative cognitive damage. I manage this by taking 15 pills a day. I take a combination of protein supplements about four times a day. I weigh and measure everything that I eat, and I take blood protein tests on a semi-regular basis to make sure that my blood protein levels are under control. It affects less than half a percent of the population, and you don't have to know this about me unless I choose to tell you because I appear healthy otherwise. We live in a world where we build frameworks to understand it better. We create stereotypes. We make decisions about people based on what we see outwardly about them. We grew up with this because from a very young age, our parents told us not to talk to strangers. They probably wanted to make sure that we wouldn't be harmed by someone with bad intentions. But as we get older, we can have some difficulty getting past these stereotypes, and we continue to perceive people only by what we see about them outwardly. So I want to share with you a few lessons that I've learned living with this condition that you don't have to know about me unless I choose to tell you. The first is that access is really, really important. I know firsthand what the right kind of access and the right kind of treatment for people can make. In my case, because PKU, or phenylketonuria, is so serious, if I had not grown up with the best medical care, if I had not grown up with the best doctors, if I had not had parents who would take the time, energy, and effort to make sure that I grew up with the health care that I needed, that I didn't have the access to everything that I needed to grow up healthy, I most certainly would not be up here on stage talking to you today. I would very likely be either unemployed or underemployed, living on disability. If I had not been treated at all, the outcomes for people with this condition are so severe that I would have been institutionalized in a hospital with severe autism. Instead, I'm a CEO. And we live in a country where people are denied access to things that they need all the time. We live in a country where people don't have equal opportunity. We live in a country where the wealth gap between white households and black households is a 13 times difference. We live in a country where the wealth gap between white households and Latino households is a 10 times difference. We live in a society with the legacy of things like Jim Crow laws, restrictive housing covenants, redlining, and the effects on our society are cumulative. The second thing that I want to share with you is that context is really, really important. Don't judge somebody without understanding their context. In my case, if you get to know me a little bit, you'll learn that one thing that I really like to do is work out. I go to the gym regularly. I enjoy working out. I run marathons. I take boxing classes all the time. It's something that I do for fun. It's a hobby. But if we interact a bit in passing, you'll also see me pass up social invitations to go to the gym. And you might make some assumptions about my values based on that decision, 
probably a little bit based on how you personally feel about working out. But what you don't know is that I also go to the gym because it helps me lower my blood protein levels, limiting the damage to my brain. I go to the gym out of medical necessity. And we make assumptions about people's decisions based on what we see outwardly, the choices that they make, without understanding the context from which people make those choices. You wouldn't know this about me unless you get to know my story. And likewise, people make decisions with limitations that we don't know about. People make decisions from context that we can't relate to, and we judge those, de those decisions. But we need to hear people's stories. We need to ask people questions, and perhaps their decisions might make a lot more sense from the context that they're making them. And the last thing I want to share with you is that it's really hard to keep speaking up for yourself. It's really hard when you have a fight that other people can't relate to, when it's something that's so foreign and external to you and your circumstance, but that person has to keep speaking, has to keep asking. See, in my case, if you and I were to go out to lunch one time, if we were just to have a business meeting, I might tell you that I'm vegan. In fact, it's likely that I would tell you that I'm vegan because it's easier to give you a surface level explanation than to go in the de into the depth required to explain the seriousness of my medical condition. But if we're in a situation where we have an ongoing relationship, where I have to interact with you frequently, or where I don't have control of my food choices, then I have to start making very, very specific requests. I have to say things like, I can't have dairy, I can't have cheese, I can't have soy, I can't have meat, I can't have nuts, I can't have tofu, I can't have seeds, I can't have the vegan option, here's my letter of medical necessity, I only want fruits and vegetables, no really, I only want fruits and vegetables, and people don't believe me, and in the spirit of being helpful, they give me things that I can't have that are harmful to me. And so I have to keep explaining myself, and I have to keep talking and asking over and over again for the things that I need. And when people have battles that they have to fight for things that they need, it gets tiring, it gets exhausting. So sometimes those requests might not come out in the way we want to hear them. It might come out as tears, might come out as yelling, might come out as anger, might come out as rage or frustration, might come out as riots. Dr. Martin Luther King said, riots are the language of the unheard. So in a quick recap, three things to remember. Access is important for people. We need to work together for equity. Second, context is important. Don't judge people without understanding their context. And third, it's hard to keep speaking up for yourself. We need to have patience with people. So I want to leave you with a call to action and something that you can do today to work through your stereotypes. But I can't do that. There is no call to action because people are beautiful and complex and are more than their stereotypes. And the only way to work through our stereotypes is to recognize this and begin to get engage with people individually. Thank you. Thank you.